Well, it seems more and more families are returning to Abaco, heightening the demand for infrastructure, more specifically classrooms. Director of Education Marcellus Taylor while, says while schools in the southern region are highly functioning, a lack of infrastructure still presents a major challenge in central Abaco. And while students in the northern region await their school repairs and makeshift classrooms, the Department of Education is looking for a solution to address the disparity between students and teachers. It seems like every day um, more students are returning to Abaco and so therefore our efforts are scaling up as, as that occurs. We're having a challenge because, you know, um, some teachers who were posted in Abaco pre the storm um, have been uh, redeployed here for their convenience because of, you know, the situation. But then they're not necessarily ready to return at this point. Some of them, you know, I guess, want to kind of finish this academic year here. Um, but for those who are willing and able to return to Abaco, we um, are trying to get them to go because we need the teacher force to match the student enrollment. Concerns, concerns also expressed about how student survivors will be facilitated for the upcoming BJC and BGCSE examinations. Both Abaco and Grand Bahama students would have lost a considerable amount of school time due to Dorian's destruction. However, Taylor says they remedied that problem for the most part. What we've done with secondary level students if, uh, is we've employed uh, virtual learning platforms. So we have a site here in the Providence where we have a group of 12 teachers, I think it's 12 or 13, who provide um, virtual learning and we created a new site in, in Grand Bahama with teachers there to also provide uh, learning and tutelage to students in the Abaco area who have been displaced or, you know, otherwise affected by the storm.